Welcome back to Teach Amanda Fish Channel. I'm really excited to do this video with you today. This is the best stuffed jalapeno poppers that you've ever eaten. Let's go ahead and get started. So whether you're getting these jalapenos from the garden or from the store, you can make these at home and they're better than anything you get in a restaurant or frozen. Let's head out to my garden. So a lot of people ask, when is the right time to pick jalapenos? Some people like it when they have dry lines on it. Some of them when they're red, that's the full ripe. Actually, when they have striations on it like this, that just means that they've grown faster than the outside could keep up with, and it's a more mature pepper. I like them when they're a little bit younger and the lines haven't started to form, but they've got the big enough size. Here you can see the difference in size much larger versus this younger one. And the way I like to pick them is just roll them up. Now, would you just take a look at these beautiful biker billies? The jalapenos that you see in this video are biker billy jalapenos from Burpee. I'll put a link down below where you can get these seeds. They are amazing, large jalapenos. Now what you might see that's a little bit different, I like to cut my stems off and leave some of that white meaty part in the jalapeno because when I cut it in half and you clear out, that meat and seeds, you end up with more of a boat effect than kind of an open end. I believe it holds the cheese and the breading better. The heat and the oil in these jalapenos resides in that webbing as well as the seed. Are jalapeno poppers hot? You are absolutely in control of that by how many seeds and how much of that webbing you leave in. The heat level is up to you. Now it can be advisable to use some rubber gloves or disposable gloves during this process because you will get that capsaicin oil on your hands. It doesn't bother me very much, so I don't worry about it. We'll even answer questions like, can fresh jalapeno poppers be frozen? Are jalapeno poppers good for you? The next thing that we need to do after the star of the show is put together is get the rest of those ingredients prepped up. You can look down in the description for a full list of all the ingredients, but basically it's salt, flour, panko breadcrumbs, and buttermilk. The cheese stuffing consists of equal parts of cream cheese and cheddar cheese, some bacon bits, little garlic powder, and a little bit of onion powder. So actually, Anchor Foods claims that they invented jalapeno poppers in 1992. But some people say it's a variation of a Mexican dish called chili rellenos. Next up is the process of stuffing the jalapenos. And really, you're just trying to spread the mixture out across all of the jalapenos that you have. I like to make certain that they're all full up and as a matter of fact, sticking up a little bit above the jalapeno to make that round top. So jalapenos were first cultivated in the city of Jalapa in Mexico. If you aren't fortunate enough to have your own fresh garden varieties to pick from, when you go to the store, just go to the ones that feel the least squishy, maybe don't have sores on them, they'll clean up nice. A lot of people don't realize that the pepper used in sriracha sauce Sriracha? Sriracha. A lot of people don't realize that the peppers used in sriracha sauce are actually red jalapenos. For the dipping process, we use a wet hand, dry hand method, meaning one hand is designed to do all of the dipping and the other hand is designed to stay dry. If you get that confused, you'll end up with a clumped up mess 
all over your fingers. This first breading stage is pretty easy because all you do is create a little divot in the flour, dip into the buttermilk, and then allow it to soak for 15, 20, 30 seconds in that flour. And you can see there where some of the buttermilk is pulling back. That's what you don't want. You want that flour to become stuck to that jalapeno that's coated in buttermilk. When you're pulling it out, you want to gently sift it out of the flour so that you don't expose what's been covered by that buttermilk and flour. You avoid getting those holes in your breading because it results in either cheese leakage or you have bits of the jalapeno showing through. After you've gotten the flour on those poppers, go ahead and let it set and almost like cure and settle in. Once that flour is firmed up a little bit, you repeat the same process with the panko breadcrumbs. This recipe is not low carb at all, but we'll be making some keto style recipes in the future with some bacon and some cream cheese and cheddar, many different varieties. If you like any of the cooking or gardening equipment we use in this video, look down below for the Amazon links and you can purchase them. If you aren't using an electric fryer with the dial temperature gauge, you're going to want to heat this up to about 350, 375 degrees. You actually don't want them to cook too quick because it won't get into the cheese in the middle and make it nice and gooey. So jalapenos are rich in vitamins like A, C, carotene, vitamin K, even B vitamins. You've even got more vitamin C in jalapenos than you do in oranges. There are also a lot of reported benefits out there from capsaicin, everything from digestive, anti-inflammatory, as well as cancer fighting. What's the best jalapeno popper dip? So what kind of dip do you like on your jalapeno poppers? You've got spicy mayo, ranch, blue cheese. I like ranch for dipping my jalapeno poppers. So we'll be making a series of playlist videos specifically for jalapeno poppers. In the garden, it's been a great jalapeno year. So I've got the avalanche of jalapenos coming in. I might as well share with you all the different ways that we cook them in our family. Again, the heat can be controlled by the amount of seeds that you leave in each one or that webbing that the seeds are anchored to. That's where the heat is in a jalapeno. You strip all that out, you get a lot of that jalapeno flavor. Without the heat, you leave it in, you get some of that heat. Mm. Keep it right there. So if you hung in all the way through to the end here, we answered the question is, can you cook them and then freeze them? Well, this is the next day. These are frozen. We pulled them out of the fridge in the morning and decided to go ahead and cook a few up. If you've got an air fryer or a convection oven, whatever kind of oven you use, you can throw these back in. They come out just like they came off the fryer last night. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist that I think you might enjoy. I hope you liked it.
If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.